Hello, this is Dr. Anime Shaha. I am a consultant clinical oncologist and today we will be discussing about ovarian cancer. Ovary is a pair of female reproductive, reproductive organ in which ova or eggs are produced. So any cancer involving ovary is called ovarian cancer. According to Globocon data 2020, ovary is the third most common cancer in women, which accounts for roughly about 6.7% of all cancer in women. In India in 2020, there are about 46,000 new cases of ovarian cancer with 32,000 deaths from ovarian cancer. Uh, the first and foremost uh, risk factor for ovarian cancer is family history. Having a first degree relative uh, with the ovarian cancer doubles the risk of ovarian cancer. Uh, genetic mutation in BRCA1 gene increases the risk of ovarian cancer by about 60%. And genetic mutation in BRCA2 gene increases the risk of ovarian cancer by 11 to 16%. Families having hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer also predisposes the patient to the risk of ovarian cancer by about 12%. Among the other risk factors of ovarian cancer, number one is infertility, number two is high socioeconomic status, number three is obesity, number four is long-term hormone replacement therapy. So there are certain factors which can protect a woman from ovarian cancer. Number one is pregnancy and breastfeeding. Uh, number two is uh, outdoor exposure or lifestyle, which is probably linked to vitamin D. Uh, number two, number three is uh, diet rich in fruits and vegetables, uh, tomato, carrots, which are high in carotenoids. Number four is uh, late menarche and early menopause. Uh, number five is use of oral contraceptive pills, which has been shown to reduce the risk of ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer is often called a silent killer because the symptoms are quite vague and non specific at early stage. The most common symptoms include increase in abdominal girth. Uh, abdominal bloating, uh, early satiety, pain in abdomen or pelvis, increased frequency of uh, micturation, uh, nausea, vomiting, swollen leg, uh, swollen abdomen, uh, sometimes uh, pain in uh, abdomen or back, etc. So whenever a patient comes to us with the symptoms, we take a detailed history, we clinically examine the patient, we ask for some routine blood test and we also ask for a tumor marker called CA125. If patient's age is less than 40, we sometimes ask for two other tumor marker like alpha fetoprotein or beta ECG. Uh, along with this blood test, we usually recommend a transvaginal ultrasound in early stage of ovarian cancer. Uh, once these tests are done and uh, we are suspecting uh, ovarian cancer, we recommend patient to have a CT scan of chest, abdomen and pelvis. Sometimes we also recommend an whole body PET CT scan. Uh, in early stage, we try to avoid biopsy or FNSE when surgery is contemplated, but in advanced stages when we are proceeding with any treatment, we do recommend to have a biopsy before proceeding with treatment with chemotherapy. Based on the tumor size, local extent and spread of the tumor to nearby lymph node or distant organ, ovarian cancer can be divided into four stages, stage one to stage four. The standard treatment for uh, ovarian cancer is to go ahead with a surgery with an aim to accurately stage the cancer and remove the cancer as much as possible. But in uh, advanced stages like stage 3 or stage 4, 
it is now standard treatment to go ahead with the chemotherapy before proceeding with the surgery. Most patients after surgery will need a chemotherapy except very early stage low risk patient. Uh, fertility preserving surgery like removing one ovary and taking biopsy from the other ovary is sometimes done in very low risk cancer like borderline uh, ovarian cancer or germ cell tumor or stage 1 ovarian cancer. In advanced stages, targeted therapy is used along with chemotherapy on after chemotherapy as a maintenance treatment and has been shown to have promising results in controlling advanced stage cancer. Sometimes patient might need a radiotherapy for symptom control like pain or bleeding. Thank you for watching.